the way you train stability, there's no one exercise or one technique. It's a variety of stimuluses, tasks, speeds, tensions, to create motor patterns, which are just, you know, different muscles coming in at different times to keep the whole area quiet. So individual joint stability we're going to start with as opposed to whole body stability. What he's going to do here is just tighten the abs as tight as he can and relax. This is called a, a brace. Tight again, someone designed by a guy in Canada named McGill. And the whole idea of the brace is as you tighten, a little pain there? No, oh, it's just cramps. Tense it again. You're trying to tense all the muscles around the abdominal area. This is the basis of all exercise. So you can see all these muscles around the ribs kicking in. So that there's a fascia, like a belt that wraps around. And as he tightens this area, he gets contraction around the back, and the muscles in the back contract with these abdominal muscles. So it keeps the area quiet. Okay, that's the first exercise. Okay. Okay. Then we're going to overload that. Okay. And think of it. That old day when boxers used to get hit here, it's actually a good concept. You're trying to create a spring-like mechanism and down. Again, this is really how the abs work. They're a spring mechanism. When they tense, they lock up and they create spring-like stiffness in the spine. Relax. And, uh, to an extent, that's what you're trying, trying to create with stability. Multiple, multiple muscles firing is stiffness and down. Stiffness is not a bad thing. Sometimes you hear about you don't want a stiff spine. Actually, with unstable segments, you want a very stiff spine. And down. Flex. Okay. Now, a question we get all the time is, should the back be rounded, flat, whatever? It's a little bit of variability. Based on the fact he's got such a big arch, I would want his back flat. If someone's got you know a real rounded low back posture, you might want a more neutral with a little bit of arch. But I'm going to put my hand under his back because he's got the big arch. And I want him to keep pressure on my hands. So in his case, I'm going to flatten his back out a little bit. Okay, brace. Now I want you to lift your left leg up for me, y'all. Keep the pressure on my hand. Now, oh, bring it up there. Now, if you can, bring the right leg up. And if the back doesn't move, you're okay. Left leg down. Keep the pressure on my hand. Right leg down. Good. Okay. Left leg up. Pressure on my hand. Right leg up. Left leg down. No matter which leg you start with, that's the sequence. Now, if you couldn't keep the pressure on there, you just do one leg at a time. Right up, squeeze it down, nice and tight. So now the goal is to get the abs firing and the buttocks firing. The gluteals, key back stabilizers. Up again. Squeeze those butts, squeeze the butt. Nice and tight, abs tight. Now, if you feel pain when you do this, just don't lift as high. Down, got it. Progression from there. His buttocks up, bridging. Straighten one leg out at a time. Just lift one leg up, hold it. Now the key is that you stay level here, that it doesn't drop. Now I'm overloading the left buttock. He's overloading it. That's it, nice and level. So this is checking for rotary instability. If he's weak on this side, he would tip over like this. So we want this straight as a board. Switch. Again, the goal is to work up to 10 reps with approximately five second holds. If you need to take a break in between, just drop. Okay, so moving on with stability. A little bit of whole body stability and individual joint stability right here. Remember what stability is, it's the summation of, of strength at various angles, uh, coming in at various angles to support the area here. And multiple muscles working, working different speeds, working different proprioceptive challenges, balance challenges all coming together to support the joint to create some stiffness in the area where he's loose. We've got four walls we're looking at. This is the back wall. We're doing an exercise now to work on the back wall. We've got side walls and we've got a front wall underneath and kind of a rotation, you know, like a, a belt. We're going to work on this back area here, the back wall and the rotary wall right now. And what that entails is the opposite arm leg reach. Let's just start off with the hip extension here. Straighten the leg out for me, Al. Brace the abs as tight as you can. Now what I want to see, lower the leg a little bit. Do not do that high. This area should stay still. And when you're ready, opposite arm up. It's pretty good. You can see it goes a little bit into the arch here. Kind of drops in a little bit. We want to keep that as flat as we can. And down without anything moving in the back. So first thing you do is brace. Lock the abs in. Once the abs are tight, there's less of a chance anything's going to move here. Extend the leg out on the left side. Hold it. So that looks
looks really good. He got away with that. Look how quiet he kept that. That's good. A little bit more challenging, you see, as he holds it, but he's keeping it quiet. And switch. So he's going into the dynamic, which is motion now. He's learning to keep the area quiet while he moves the extremities. postures and break. Excellent. Okay, good. That's great. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the plank sequence. Now again, you've got to progress into these. Let's start off on the elbows. A couple ways we can do this. I bend the knees now. Back and forth. Nothing should move here. What we don't want to see is a collapse here. This is just the start. So as soon as I pick up the left hand, your body wants to tip to the left. Switch. Okay, so this is just the start of it, just picking the hand up. Now the more advanced version, of course, is going to the push-up position. The wider leg stance to make it easier. Okay, ready, one arm up. That's good, just lift it up two inches off the floor. Switch. See, every time you lift that hand, how? Uh, if you're weak, one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to tip over to the left, or you're going to compensate by doing this. We want it straight as a board. Switch. And switch again. Now you make it harder by bringing your feet closer together. And it's a little bit more of a challenge here. Feel that work? Mm -hmm. And break. Good. Kind of, that's too hard. You just do it against a wall like this. See the same. So I can do the same exercise and make it dramatically easier, and then I can work my way into a horizontal position. But you can start off the same way there. It's good. Okay, now we're still working in on all these different wall layers to support the spine. Now we're in the side plank mode. Again, common in yoga and Pilates, as well as physical therapy. Knees straight, straight as a board. Now, the easiest version, of course, is if you bend both knees and lift the buttocks up from here. It's straight, straight, and you always start with a brace, locking in here, tightening the abs. A lot of the work of Stuart McGill that if you brace and tighten, you get the thoracic lumbar fascia, which is a kind of a belt tightening around here, and you get contraction of the back extensors as well. And down, 10 second holds and up. Bracing tight, tight, tight. And you wanna to try to reduce this arch in your back a little bit, yeah. That's so, it. Yeah. You, you, you have to almost pelvic tilt a little bit. Relax. Okay. Now, progressing into the knee straight. Axis is now at the feet. Okay. Ready? And up. More advanced version. 10 second holds. So you're not only building strength, you're building strength endurance. And strength endurance is arguably even more important than strength. How long can you maintain strength? So yeah, he's fatiguing big time now. Yeah. Push it up. So that tells you right there. You know, for someone as strong and as athletic as you, that's a big problem. You know, if you're going to play... Well, t in, with yeah. your new technique, like the way I was probably doing them was... Yeah, just in and out of them. cheating, yeah. Yeah, you're not maintaining it. Now he's got to build up the right wall. Okay, remember, we're talking about whole body stability here. He needs individual stability through the abdominal area, uh, the low back area, core abdominal. But he's got to work these hips, too, and down. So we're creating stability and the shoulder joint as well. And up, so you're, with strength, you're, you're limited by the weakest link in the chain. So we're trying to create stability through the shoulder girdle, the core connecting to the hip girdle. So when you think of a plank, it's really a great exercise. Now, you're limited by the weakest link in the chain. Now the key is to get the whole chain strong so there is, isn't a weak link. One more time, up. And you can see he's fatiguing very quickly here which, again, is something in a matter of a couple weeks will make dramatic improvement with bracing and down. Okay, good. Now, again, you can take these to super high levels on the arm, lifting the top leg up. There's no limit on how high you can take this amount of stability training you want to do.